Welcome back to the Chad Easty Show on News Talk KFYO. This time last year, we were in Washington, D.C. at the uh, fair, hold their feet to the fire, uh, immigration radio row. Uh, and that's where uh, we, we met our, uh, our next guest, uh, who's joined us a few times here on the program to talk uh, illegal immigration and also rule of law, uh, which is uh, a big thing that uh, I, I, it, I think it's going to be a big issue uh, in this uh, campaign uh, between uh, President Trump and Joe Biden. Uh, our next guest here on the program, a former uh, agent uh, who headed the DEA Special Operations Division, good friend of the show, Derek Maltz, uh, here on the Chad HD Show. Uh, Derek, welcome back. How are you, my friend? Uh, thank you, Chad. I appreciate the call. I look forward to the conversation. Yeah, it's uh, it's always good to have you. Uh, you know, we, we I, I guess we'll we'll first start off with uh, uh, illegal immigration. It's something we were we were discussing earlier that uh, illegal immigration has, in some ways, taken kind of a back seat. Uh, I, I think in many people's minds, with coronavirus out there, with all the protest and looting and everything else, uh, and obviously with the Supreme Court. Uh, now up, uh, you know, for uh, for battle. Uh, but, you know, illegal immigration, it's still a, a big, big issue when you look at the differences between what a Biden administration would bring to the table uh, versus what the president has done so far. Right. So, Chad, I mean, illegal immigration hasn't stopped and the consequences haven't stopped. Last night, a brave Border Patrol officer down in the Dallas doing patrol had to be, uh, you know, stabbed multiple times and then had to uh, kill the suspect, you know, who was trying to get into the country, right? And at the same time, they see 17 pounds of fentanyl in Am- Amato, Arizona, right, which could have killed 4 million people. Yeah. So this stuff is happening every day. And, and, yes, you're correct. With all the other madness in America, people are not talking about this. So thank you for bringing it up. Well, you you look at uh, what what Biden would bring to the table. Uh, what what is his regular? What what does he want to do as far as Ill- illegal immigration goes? Because it seems to me uh, he and, and and the leftist uh, they want complete open borders and uh, you know give everything away to everybody who just walks across. Right. I mean, look, it's real simple. Let's keep it really simple. Law and order is what Trump's going to bring, and chaos and corruption and crime. Right is what is going to happen in the, in, in the Biden administration. I mean, let's be really clear. Biden is now like a puppet, right? He's going to do what the left-wing lunatics want him to do, right? And open borders just doesn't make any sense to anybody when you look at, you know, law and order, if you look at life and death, if you look at, you know, communities. Law, it doesn't make any sense to anyone. Yeah. You know, we, we, we talk a lot about uh, what's happening along the, the, the border and, and immigration from Central and South America. What about China? Uh, I, I know that's something that uh, has popped up a lot lately. Okay, so let's, let's, let's talk about this as far as China's role in international drug trafficking, but specifically to the chaos in our country. Let's look at the Border Patrol statistics. The CBP statistics for MEP last year alone, 160,000 pounds of meth was seized, 94% increase, 45% increase in fentanyl seizures at the border, over 4,000 pounds. Now, here's what most people in America don't talk about, Chad, is that the chemicals to produce this massive amount of meth are coming directly from China and other countries in Asia. But the fentanyl, as you know, is being produced in China, very pure fentanyl that's killing our citizens at unprecedented levels. But China's role has expanded in the drug trafficking world. So, like, in, as an example, with the money laundering, these multi-million dollar money laundering pickups in America, the Chinese now are controlling the money laundering for the Mexican cartels. They have brokers that sit in Mexico that work with the Sinaloa cartel, that work with the Jalisco cartel, and collect the money, you know, charge very little commission, and move the money around the world so the cartels can flourish. But the biggest thing, Chad, that people are not talking about is China is a communist country that wants to destroy their adversaries. We are an adversary of China. They dump this, this Wuhan virus into our country. They dump the fentanyl. They dump the synthetic chemicals. They're dumping the, the methamphetamine. And we're not talking about mom-and-pop operations. In Mexico, these labs are producing like seven tons 
in three days. That's why, like in Atlanta two weeks ago, they seized 2,000 pounds of meth. That's unheard of in America. And the other thing is, like, people are getting caught up in the opioid crisis, right, and the pill crisis. But what's killing our citizens now is what's coming from China and Mexico. And so how, how do we get a handle on it? And I know the, the administration is, it is, is you know, that they've stepped up, uh, you know, what they can do. But, I mean, there's, there's obviously more that can be done. Well, for one, you have to educate the public. I mean, look, Congress is useless, right? They, they're not paying attention. They don't care about the people in the cities of America. They care about themselves and their bank accounts. They're not paying attention to the threats. This is not the 70s when people were smoking joints, you know, 3%, 5% THC. This is poisonous chemicals coming in from our biggest threat in the world, China, right? And so we have to start being way more aggressive. That's why I've been a, a proponent of designating the Mexican cartels as a terrorist organization and start using the best and brightest and the, and the most sophisticated technology and the authorities that we have in this country to go after the, the supply line of chemicals and the cash. Chad, it's real simple. If, they, if you shut down their chemical supply, they can't produce the drugs. If you take away the cash and the assets, they're not in business any longer. It's really that simple. So apply the resources, get the agencies to work together, stop the madness uh, of not sharing information, and go after these people like they're a real threat to America. 70,000 people died last year from drug overdoses, right? This is serious. I don't know why the public is not talking about it. And a lot of this has to do with illegal immigration. You have people that come into this country to work for the cartels in these different cities. Like in, in a lot of these arrest operations, all you got to do is ask how many of those people are illegal. And you'll see a majority of these people are illegal that are involved in the command and control movement of drugs and money in this country. Derek, uh, you brought up something earlier, and, and uh, I remember that uh, the administration at one point and the president had mentioned that uh, he wanted to designate uh, some of these um, cartels as terror organizations, and then the news kind of went away. Uh, we, we haven't heard anything new uh, after that announcement. Have you heard anything new, or is, is the – uh, are you know are we are we doing anything different when it comes to uh, taking on the cartels? All right, great question. So it's like a roller coaster ride. The president wants to protect America, and that's why he came up with the idea of designating them as terrorists. And as soon as you raise that issue in the Washington swap, you're going to get pushback because of the politics with Mexico and all the stuff that goes on at the border. So you get State Department and other law enforcement agencies pushing back. So the president is trying to do the right thing. So this is how embarrassing it is, Chad. I had to go out to Ohio earlier this year because the Ohio Congress, they are getting decimated in their, in their cities and their state from drug overdoses. So they wanted to designate the cartels, but they don't have a way to do it. So what they did is they had hearings to vote on should we designate the cartels as terrorists. They got unanimous support in a bipartisan way in the, in the House and Senate in, in Ohio to try to help, you know, push the, uh, you know, the bureaucrats to do it. Yeah. Chip Roy in Texas has been phenomenal. He's been a leader in designating the cartels as terrorists because he sees the devastation firsthand in Texas, right? And so basically the bottom line is, Chad, we really haven't seen any movement. The president would, would definitely do it, but he's getting bad advice, as he does in many cases. They're not giving him the right information. So basically people are going to continue to die. And that's the bottom line. We have to start doing things differently. Like, what was it, Einstein that said, you know, the definition of insanity is doing things the same old way and expecting different results? Well, guess what? It's getting worse. That's why the deaths are rising. That's why the destruction of families is, is going up. That's why a lot of this gang violence is escalating in Chicago and other cities, because the drug crisis is escalating. So, yeah, we have to start doing a lot better, and we have to get the president the right information. Well, you know, let's let, – you know, moving on just you know, for a little bit, I, I want to, to talk about what we see uh, in these major cities with all these protests, all the unrest that's out there. I know it's something that, that uh, you've tweeted a lot about, uh, which is, you know, law and order uh, in this country. Uh, I mentioned it earlier. I think Louisville now has a, uh, a national declaration order because – 
uh, of protests they expect to see uh, tonight uh, in their country, in, in their city. Um, I'm thinking we'll probably see protests uh, after the president makes uh, an announcement on the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, what more needs to be done on on a, a federal level to get some of these cities under control? Well, look, the president has offered assistance to a lot of these Democratic-run states and cities. They refuse to have him help. They don't want him to get a political advantage. The reality is, is innocent store owners, innocent people are getting hurt. I mean, the fires, the looting, you know, putting police cars on fire, and this nonsense of defund the police. You know, Chad, I can tell you I've been involved in law enforcement over 30, 35 years. I have never met a cop that wants to go out and hurt somebody because of their skin color or because of their race. Cops leave their house in the morning trying to protect the citizens of America. They don't go out hunting people because of their race or their skin color. Why isn't anybody talking about, look, if you're committing crimes and then you're resisting arrest and then you have a gun or a knife in your hand, you're escalating the situation and the police officers have to, you know, protect themselves. The bottom line is, is the federal government with the National Guard and the federal resources with Operation Legend, they're doing a lot of great work around the country. Attorney General Barr has stepped up big time and has deployed federal resources into some, you know, important strategic locations around the country. So we are making a difference, but a lot more work has to be done. We also have to establish the confidence in the citizens of law enforcement. I mean, it's absurd that they're talking about the funding and hurting the police. I mean, who's going to answer the 911 calls? Who's going to respond when you have an emergency, right? And who's going to go into burning buildings like our brave men and women did on 9-11, right? And so there's, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And, you know, unfortunately, these opportunists are taking advantage, these anarchists, these communists, and these other political parties out there and these political agendas. And unfortunately, the only people hurt are the, are the, you know, the citizens of these different communities. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Derek Maltz, former uh, special uh, agent, uh, DA's, uh, DEA Special Operations Division. Uh, appreciate your time. Always good to hear from you, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Chad. Anytime, buddy. All right. Thank you. That's Derek Maltz uh, here on the Chad Hasty Show. A uh, segment there brought to you by our friends over at FAIR. Hold their feet to the Fire Immigration Radio Row event. 